No matter who you are or where you live, if your passion is hunting, then make your dreams come true. Join us on a great safari and adventure as we traverse five continents in search of world's finest hunting trophies. Join the best professional hunters in the world in search for the best trophy animals. You will experience unforgettable hunting adventures and international cultures that few people on earth get to know. Share the thrill of the ultimate challenge to promote the sustained use of world's greatest renewable resources, wildlife conservation, and fair chase hunting. Feel the excitement, share the passion, join the experience of the ultimate adventure that this world has to offer. Let Safari Season take you there. Today we will undertake a travel towards the dawn of European civilizations. Sapienza. 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 Okay. I think this will be close enough, Sapienza. Uh, yeah, that's about as close to Greek that as I'm going to get is the island here. And uh, the hunters only can come from Wednesday to Saturday. The local hunters in Greece can come on Saturday only. They can hunt mouflin, which there's a big, uh, big herd on the island. But again, they are difficult to get at. And I don't know how many country there is in population for sure. But uh, there's very limited tags for the people of Greece and local hunters, and there's only 10 tags for international hunters. The year is 2012, and it is our first time at the island, but it would not be our low expedition there. We were overfilled with hope for the success of our hunting adventure and its result. Until then, there was only one hunter that managed to shoot down the exotic ibex with bow and arrows. This hunter is well known to us. It is about Archie Nesbitt, the hunter that uses bow and arrows very well, and we have seen him taking down animals at the impossible distances of more than 100 meters. That is why we knew hunting the ibex, even if it was already achieved by one bow hunter, would not prove easy to repeat. If Gary succeeded, he would be the second hunter globally that had achieved the success. We were at the island, ready for difficult marches and hitchhiking the rocky tops. We were physically prepared for a difficult and exhausting hunt, but as it usually happens in hunting, we were wrong. The stalking we expected while climbing the rocky tops of the island was just not included in the plans of your hunting guide, Giannis. We were soon to understand from our own experience that his tactics for hunting ibexes was entirely based on the blind mercy of the goddess of hunting. From our first day at the island, our time was passing by and waiting at particular places where, according to the hunting guide, ibexes could show up. Being the diligent hunters that believe in the skills of their guide, who was the only hunting guide at the island, we were about to follow his guidelines. While we were waiting for some ibex to approach the abandoned lighthouse by chance at the western side of the island, one mufflin started approaching us. Later on, we understood the twisted horn rams loved roaming in the abandoned building. It was quite funny waiting for it to see its reaction when it approached us at sufficient distance and saw us. Meanwhile, one Cree Cree was passing along the pathways in the bushes at some 200 meters from us. We vaguely hoped it would follow the mufflin and approach us at one shot distance. Mufflins are not famous for their sharp eyesight, unlike ibexes, yet they have incredible hearing and sense of smell. Even if it did not see well, Mufflin soon uncovered us and ran away. Our hope for the chance to make ibex approach us vanished into thin air. Cree Cree headed in another direction while leaving us stare after it with empty hands. Soon we had to head for the harbor because weather started deteriorating and it was raining cats and dogs. The goddess of the hunt was seeing us off while laughing and crying at the same time, and in tune with the ironic finish of our unsuccessful hunt, she provided us with unexpected meeting at the pathway. 
Only the pouring rain witnessed our meeting with the large ibex. At less than 10 meters, the animal took a good look of us without we being able to do anything. Then it turned its back and ran in the nearby shrubs. This is what we call a meeting by chance. Our guide was even more surprised than us. We continued along the pathway to the K. We could do nothing else but curse our luck and something else. That was too much for Gary, and since he was a well-educated and intelligent man, he poured his anger onto one target. If that were the ibex we met along the pathway, the hunt would have been over. Chance favors the prepared, and not that often the lucky ones. We were neither the first nor the second. During our first two hunting expeditions in Greece, the captain of the boat that every morning brought us to the island was a typical sea wolf, Captain Stavros, an incredible man that seemed to have been created in a pirate novel. I think this is the moment to guide you about the arrangement of the hunting territory where we are about to hunt. And it is an island. Hunting ibexes takes place at a deserted island where the only building is a lighthouse which emits light for the ships in the night. On that day, two presidents of the SCI, one of them former and the other future, were about to compete at the island. Beautiful day in Greece. Every week since the beginning of November until the first week of December, there are four days for hunting Cree from Wednesday to Saturday inclusive. Each of these hunting days starts at 8 a.m. in the morning at the Mathoni K, where together with a forestry official and the hunting representative of the reserve and all hunters, we board the only officially licensed boat and sail off hunting. Depending on your wish and sea waves height, the captain leaves us at one of the four possible and chosen by you small Ks. Our arrival is at about 8.30 to 8.50 a.m and at that time the sun raises fast in the sky and shines all over the island with its warm rays. Larry Higgins' joke would have been twice as funny if I knew back then he was the future president of Safari Club. The most tragic about it was that both presidents were about to come to the island many times in the next two years before they managed to get the desired trophy. They were about to come and look at the animals from afar until Lady Luck backed them. During the day, temperatures went up to around 20 to 25, and every year we got back from Greece with pleasant dusky tan we got while crossing the island all day long. The late arrival of the hunters to the island was shrewdly decided by the Greek authorities. It was probably in order to cut down hunters' chances of success in hunting the precious ibexes. The island is the only place in the world where the purest Krikris are believed to live. Ibexes originate from Crete. From there, they got their name. But hundreds of years ago, they mixed their genes with the freely walking domestic goats of the locals. Because of that reason, all Cree Cree that inhabit some parts of Greece are hybrids and much bigger, with different color and larger horns than the ones at our island.
Because of the fact the island is a reserve inhabited only by Cree Cree and Mufflins, staying here after 1430 is strictly forbidden. Nobody can spend the night at the island, and the period during which hunting is allowed at the island is from 830 to 1430 four days a week, if the weather is fine and there are no high waves that hinder us from making it by boat. Hence the way animals move and mostly spend the night remains complete mystery to the hunters, and they have to make guesses or rely on their luck to find an ibex for hunting. At least this is what our former hunting guide used to do back then. He was walking slowly along the stone pathways and was praying to meet an ibex along them. Our hunting days passed an endless and boring wait for some Cree Cree to pass in our direction by chance. There is no shortage of ibexes at the island. Their population is huge for the small island. They just didn't want to come to us. This is the strangest way of hunting ibexes. But we couldn't do anything else because hosts set the rules. And we were good guests, so we adhered to them. And we kept walking along the well-known pathways between the rocky uplands that were not very high. The highest point at the island is 800 meters, and we could conquer any peak where we saw an animal in less than an hour without being in a hurry. The whole organization and arrangement of our hunt seemed very strange to us back then. We had the feeling our efforts and the money invested in coming to there and hunting that ibex were in vain. And it proved true. The way we were about to find out after two years of unsuccessful hunting attempts at the island. We would not unveil for you the complex conspiracy that was created to collect Hunter's money and not make it to the state budget. This is part of another movie that we hope you will see very soon. We can only assure you the people involved in those frauds are already exposed and it is a matter of time to be penalized. According to the global practice, when some hunting species is with limited population, the country at whose territory it is located sells annually several tags. With the raised funding, they usually create organization for species preservation. The more exotic and scarce species is, the fewer the tags and the higher the price the hunters pay for hunting trophy animals. With the raised huge funds, the state creates organization for rearing the endangered species and increasing their population. And Cree Cree Ibex is the only of its kind because the only pure population of this species is left at the island of Sapienza. That is why we were there. We had prepaid huge sum of money to be hunting one of the animals to be shot down. Yet we didn't have the chance because animals always prove to be out of bow's range. Hence, Gary tried that desperate shot from over 90 meters. The shot is no problem for the experienced hunter. The problem is when the animal is watching you in that open area because it has the time to make several jumps before the arrows flows the distance to it. This way, a shot produced in the open air and under the vigilant eyesight of the sought animal proves impossible. That was the way our days passed by, in endless expectation. And if some ibex crossed our pathway by chance, it saw us instantaneously and Gary didn't stand any chance of surprising it. This way, during two hunting seasons, day after day, shot after shot, Gary's desperation increased. We were ready to give up and say farewell to the ill-fated island without a trophy, just like the tens of other hunters. Even Gary's attempt to stay on his place, which was obviously at Pathways Crossroad, being used by Ibexes, was fruitless. Animals saw us almost immediately and disappeared in the thick bush before the hunter could react.
we were facing another unsuccessful hunting day at the island of Sapienza. The tactics about waiting at the pathways didn't bring about any results. We even thought of whether we got bad luck, but we were fast to reject that idea since we were not the only losers at the island. Almost every hunter, irrespective of whether he or she was hunting with a bow or a shotgun, left the place with empty hands. This could not be due to the lack of animals, because we saw ibexes everywhere around us. It was neither because of the lack of enthusiasm on behalf of the state forestry agency. It was not by chance that the ministry had issued in recent years over a dozen of tags for trophy shooting. The overpopulation of Cree Cree and Mufflins at the island could result in dangerous crisis in the case of drought or infection. They had to cut down the wildlife population as soon as possible. But everywhere along the chain there was a problem, and we solved it two years later. Now, after hundreds of hours spent on the island, we already know that being successful when hunting with a bow or a shotgun in the open area of the island was equivalent to hitting the jackpot. Additionally, we knew who didn't want us to leave with trophy animal. Back then, we blamed our bad luck and didn't even think of why someone would not want us to shoot an animal at the island. In the end of the last days of the second year of our fruitless attempts, Gary was so disappointed and hesitant that he was ready to shoot down even a mufflin and leave the ill-fated island forever. It would have turned that way if he were not accompanied by the most stubborn person you could imagine. There is no objective beyond our reach if we really want that. There is no obstacle that cannot be overcome if you really work hard for it. That person, the guardian angel of Gary, was Sonny. In addition to being an operator of ill-fated hunting sessions, she is a hunter's friend that would never leave her friend in arms in need. Hardships and disappointments that they passed together had accumulated as volcano in her and were soon enough to erupt right in the face of wrongdoers. Patience was not among her strengths, especially towards frauds and swindlers. Hence it was real surprise that she held on for so long before taking things in her hands. But that time was soon to arrive and Greece would prove too narrow for those guilty of fraud. Gary was making his last attempt not to leave Sapienza with empty hands. To top it all, Gary hit the base of mufflin horns. These were rock hard and shielded off the thin spear. Gary was about to remain without any trophy from the island. I thought I had him. Now we just come down off the mountain. Sonny's been a trooper. She doesn't break a sweat. And the old man here looks like he's been in a sauna. Uh, but I still think Lotto's going to be a saint, even though we've had uh, quite a trip here on the island. It's uh, extremely interesting. When she takes the camera off me, she'll swing around and show you the brush behind her, kind of an idea how thick it is and to the side. Um, you're not going to shoot anything in there. You have to get them out in little openings. This is one of the few landing spots that you can get into here. And there happens to be a fishery here. And that's our captain and his boat uh, out there. They drop us off here about 8.30 in the morning. They wait till we come back at 2.30 and then take us back. We've lost a number of days due to the weather and choppy seas. And uh, original four days, we got in okay. And then we stayed over and couldn't start until Wednesday again and uh, then we lost a day and now we're on we lost two days and now we're on Saturday so we've only gotten two days out of this four days and I think it's going to bring us to the closing 
of uh, our grease hunt. As much as I want to continue for the Cree Cree, uh, I think the odds with the bow and maybe even a shotgun uh, out to 90 yards is all is very, very difficult because of the thickness of the brush, the ruts all over. And I, in my heart, I think it would be great to take Deb back to Athens so uh, both her and Sonny could see some of the sights for two days and get on the airplane Wednesday morning and head back to reality, which means work. But I thank Sonny for uh, putting Turkey and Greece together and uh, we'll never forget this trip. We've been together now almost uh, one month from the time we left until when we leave on departing and say goodbye to her. It'll be almost one month, a little over four weeks, and uh, we haven't had a fight yet or an argument yet. But that's uh, that's that's better than I do with my family. So again, thank you, thank you for her family for giving her to us for this four weeks and sharing her, letting her share this experience with us all. And we'll start planning for some new adventure right away where uh, maybe we can have success and even more fun than we've had here. Thank you, Gary. That was the end of an adventure, a hunting season in Greece. But every end is a new beginning. Every failure is a lesson learned. When you have learned all lessons that destiny presented you with, you are ready. When you are ready and well prepared, luck will find you especially if you are in the homeland of Olympic gods, where people are capable of miracles. Feel the excitement